If you look around my office, you might realize I have kind of a love for dark, twisted cartoons. And a lot of that may be because I grew up with a lot of dark, twisted cartoons. Now, I'm not talking about the ones like Batman or ones that were meant for older kids. I'm talking about the ones that were meant for little, little kids, and they probably should have been made for little, little kids. And I loved the hell out of them. I enjoyed how much they scared me. I loved how every time you got through one, you felt a little tougher. So I'm doing a series reacting and reviewing them. We're gonna analyze how creative they are, how dark they are, and if the dark twisted tone was warranted. So join me in taking a look at some dark tunes. You know, for a show about a cute little yellow sponge who laughs, sure are a lot of episodes that make their way onto here. A Pal for Gary was released in 2009. This is another one that's gotten a lot of requests, so let's take a look. So I will admit, a lot of people ask me to review shows like Batman or Avatar The Last Airbender in the dark episodes that those have, but I really do like to aim for shows where you would not expect that. And SpongeBob, like I said, is a very bright and colorful show that when something really dark and mean does happen, it leaves a bigger impact. And I like this one because Spongebob has definitely dabbled into some dark ideas and territories as far as this show goes, but this is the first one I've seen where there's like a monster, like a creepy, funny monster. And I'm sure a lot of people are gonna tell me in the comments there's a lot of other episodes with monsters. I believe you. This is just the first one I've seen because I didn't grow up with the show. See you later, Gare! Oh, you wanna go for a walk? This is a classic setup where someone wants to get their pet a pal, a pal for Gary, obviously, and it's very relatable because uh, we had Chaplin, then we got Buster for that very same reason. And what I like about episodes like this that go really dark is that it's always wonderful when they start out with very innocent intent. Like it's someone actually trying to do something good and they're punished for it. But sometimes that's life. <laughs> that's why it's so funny. And as we see, Gary is actually quite content just being on his own. He likes to watch TV, his favorite shows, while SpongeBob is out. And Gary's another one of those characters where at first he didn't really have much of a personality. That was kind of the joke. He just had this blank stare and meow. Uh, but over the years, he's developed a little bit more. And I think when you have a scenario as simple as that, that's the route to go. You can keep him exactly the same and you can still get some laughs out of that. But I usually find the more you add layers on top of it, the funnier it is, because you weren't expecting that. Welcome to the cra- Sorry, sir, but the Krusty Krab has a strict no-pet policy. Continuing the running joke that even though fish have pets in this universe, they still make the sounds that our pets make. So a snail is going to meow, a worm is going to bark. I'm really wondering if there's an episode where a fish owns a fish, like in a fish bowl. I I'm really curious about that. They must have done that. That's way too good a joke. For your troubles, I'll give you two Krabby Patties. I enjoy how Mr. Krabs' claws can suddenly form fingers. Uh, you know, usually it goes like this and then suddenly two fingers can pop out like that. Again, it adds to the surrealness of this world that has a very flexible reality. Or surreality, I should say. I was just about to uh, retire the parking lot. Why don't you grab a shovel? But I've got a lonely pet snail at home. It's funny because when I first saw this, I couldn't wrap my mind around that there was something at work he was being asked to do and he wasn't doing it because he loves his job so much. But not only do they work in that it's for his pet, the love of his pet, I think that's a lot more uh, honorable, but he also worked five hours over. My shift was over five hours ago. I think that's a very clever way to work within that while also staying true to the character. Wow, Dad, is it really mine to keep? So this is a very classic scenario coming across a gypsy woman who has uh, something supernatural to sell. And I do wonder if this business trip line is supposed to be taken another way. And now Danny can go on his business trips guilt-free. Business trips is sometimes an excuse for an affair, which I could be reading too deep into, but at the same time, there is an episode where he says he'll see you next Tuesday. So maybe it's not that far-fetched. Beware, boy. This is no ordinary pet. <laughs> Gary's gonna be so happy. What I enjoy about this creature is that it's kind of a combination of a bunch of different 
monster cliches. Uh, it's starting off cute and then it's gonna become very creepy. That's gremlins. The idea of it starting off small and gonna get a lot bigger. That's alien. Uh, the idea of like tongues forming different little creatures. Not only is that alien, but it's also tremors. And what I like is that they combine all these different elements to make something that is kind of unique. You would look at this and not mistake it for another monster, but it has callbacks to other classic monsters. And I think there's a very natural evolution of creepy creatures in there. It's not always 100% original. It's borrowing from a bunch of classic sources that have worked before. Especially around other pets. <laughs> Why bother? They never listen. Even that line is kind of a send up to the cliches that they're doing. Like this has happened a lot. Like you've seen movies, you've seen TV, you know this setup. So she's like, eh, they never listen. Like, like you've seen and heard about this over and over and over. Hello, Gary. Aww. And I love this idea that not only is Gary all right, on his own. He actually prefers it when Spongebob comes home. He's kind of disappointed. <laughs> Which just makes the idea of getting a pal for him all the more pointless and all the misery that's about to follow all the more unneeded. I'll be right back. <laughs> look how quickly that transforms. If you were to slow that down and look how fast they go from big cute eyes to big sharp teeth while still holding on to both of them. It still has the cute eyes, but the teeth and creepy lips just suddenly transform it and how quickly it happens. It's very, very cleverly done and hilariously done. Gary! What happened to your manners? You be nice and share with Puppy Fluffy. And this is a send up to a lot of other classic scenarios where something bad is happening, but the person that can do something about it never sees it. This is in uh, Twilight Zone. This is in One Froggy Evening. There's a series of Sylvester cartoons that do that as well. It's a classic scenario done over and over and over because it's very funny and very suspenseful too. <laughs> The way this thing eats is also wonderful. You could have it just munch up the food and that's it, but no, now it's gonna get its mouth big enough that it can eat the entire bowl, but it also eats a little bit of the ground with it. <laughs> that does what a lot of great cartoons do, where they go over the top and then just a little bit more on top of that. Maybe you could extend that happiness to your new friend? There's something creepy about not only being in the same bed with this creature, but being under the covers with them too, because when you're a little kid and you're afraid, hiding under the covers, that's a classic thing to do, but now the monster is under the covers with you and there's no wiggle room whatsoever. <laughs> Scenarios like this are always great too, because you have this cute looking thing that at the beginning you establish it seems really innocent, but then when you know what it's really like, you don't look at it as cute anymore, even though it's the exact same design with the big cute eyes and the little smile and stuff like that, you know it's up to shit and you look at it in a more creepy way. The idea of it shedding, becoming bigger, again, classic callback to Alien. <laughs> I gotta say, for a Spongebob short, they really draw this thing intense. I can very easily see little kids being pretty freaked out by this. Yeah. Was that PG-13 movie too much for you, little Billy? Over here, put on Spongebob, you'll feel a lot better. Okay, this is nice. Ah! Again, this, this is some intense shit for a little kid. And my prized memoirs of T.S. Halibut. Oh. That is a parody of T.S. Eliot, for those who don't know. I hope you know. <laughs> That's pretty horrific. I think even though it's a cartoon, it's a very cartoony looking eye, anything happening to an eye is just gonna be unnerving. Oh, that's just, mm. For the little children. Daddy! Put Fluffy down right now. <laughs> that is hugely funny. <laughs> I I forgot he says that. Oh my god, that's really funny. I have told you and 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 told you. Oh hello. As this thing gets bigger, it has more detail added to it as well. If you draw uh, wrinkles and veins on uh, anything or anyone for that matter, they're gonna look older. So the more detail you put on something, usually uh, the older it's gonna look. And when you go from this sort of fluffy little young baby looking thing to this giant monster, not only does it show how much it changes, but also how much uh, older it's gotten, that, that it's progressing. 
This callback, I think, is pretty clever because it isn't just a throwaway joke of Gary watching TV's little cowboy show. It does tie into how things wrap up. Well, Gary, what do you have to say for yourself? But of course, Gary is still playing. You can't have a better payoff than that. What's that filthy animal doing in me kitchen? It's me, SpongeBob. I kind of love how SpongeBob confuses filthy animal for himself and he's not offended. Free labor. Serve him up, snail! So there you go, a pal for Gary. Uh, one of the more intense ones, at least that I've seen. Again, I haven't seen like a ton of episodes, but I've seen enough to, you know, know the general gist of it. Even though the monster is very creepy and intense and drawn in a really scary way, it doesn't do too much of the other horror cliches in terms of having a lot of shadow work or a lot of interesting angles. You have the uh, setup is a very traditional monster setup in terms of where he gets the monster and something has to be done in order to kind of activate the monster. It has to be with another pet in order for to get it angry. But in a weird way, because I usually talk about the fun angles and shadows in an episode, there's something kind of cool that they put all their attention into this creature. And it's a memorable creature. If you were to see this in a lineup of monsters, you'd quickly identify, no, that's that friggin' thing from Spongebob. So, I really like this episode. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's it's perfectly grotesque and creepy and intimidating. What did you think of it? Did you grow up with it? Did you see it as an adult? Did it creep you out as an adult? Uh, what are your thoughts on it, man? I'd love to know, because I thought it was a lot of fun. Hey everyone, I got a couple of these lined up. If there's any particular cartoon you want me to look at as being very dark or twisted, leave it in the comments below. Again, I'm not really looking for movie scenes or cartoons meant for teenagers or older. I'm talking about ones meant for little kids, but still scare the shit out of you. Whether it's an old cartoon or a new cartoon, let me know what you want me to look at.